Hello, my name is Annette Delu, and you are listening to The Heart of You. Today we are talking with Josette Lamotte, and she is the director of the School of Human Design France, which is a a school that helps people understand human design. And you have been a director of this school for how long now, Josette? Well, it's 20 years, almost 2000. Yeah, 2005, I think. Exactly. Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's just dive right into what exactly is human design? Well, human design, Annette, is, is a, is, we call it the science of differentiation. It really shows us how we can all be very unique and all of us have, each one of us has a very unique design and a specific purpose to fulfill with endless possibilities. And, uh, you know, there are, there are millions of variations of human beings. With human design, we can really look at the configuration of each one and then there is, of course, tools that we offer, human design offers, which, which is the strategy and the inner authority to help us align with our uniqueness. It's a, it's a wonderful tool. Amazing. It's not a be- you don't have to believe in anything. It's not about that. Yeah, it's not a religion. It's not mm-hmm. a be- you don't have to believe in anything. It's actually quite, for me, it's more like a, a mechanic that it's very down to earth, you know? Yeah. Tell me, what is the the history of human design and uh, how did you get into it specifically? Human design is is a little bit over 30 years old and it was created by Ra Uru'u. The way I came across human design is because of, uh, I saw on a magazine, a beautiful image of the mandala, which I don't know if you know what, you've seen it, Annette, I'm sure you, you did. But it's a beautiful wheel with lots of colors, and it was very attractive to me. So yeah. I, there was a number I called, and I, that's how I, and that was a while back. It was in 1990, 99, maybe something like that. And then I got my first reading, um, and then I started to study, and I studied with Ra all my classes, and I was one. I was the first analyst speaking french speaking analyst which is why then i was invited and asked to to build the school in france and uh, but i practice of course i studied in english and i you know i speak both languages like you like you and it more likely yeah <laughs> absolutely although i'm guaranteeing that your french is way better than mine because i've i've only been in france for a short amount of time so <laughs> and your english is much better well, so i have an accent but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because the very first time i heard about human design was a few years ago and i was working on an event with some colleagues of mine mm-hmm. and we were talking about possibly working together in another capacity And when we were discussing it, the one gentleman asked me, he's like, well, would you would you mind if I asked you for your birth date and your birth time and and all of that information? Because my wife is really big into human design and she would like to sort of run your chart to see if we're compatible to work together. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's really cool. I never thought about doing Uh that. And I, of course, at the time, didn't even know what human design was. I, of course, I submitted my my information to him and, you know, nothing ever came of it. But I don't think it was because of the chart. I think it was just because it was not sort of the the right time to collaborate. It was it was a really interesting thing for me to to experience. And so going into that, when you get a body diagram, a body graph, yeah, a body graph. It's a body graph. Okay, body graph. So when you get the body graph, uh, what can it tell you about a person? Well, for you, for you, Annette, because I have your chart, we call it a chart in front of my eyes right now. When you are a reflector, like you're one of the four types, you mm-hmm. are actually very rare. The reflectors are the very uh, rare uh, type compared to, for instance, the majority of people are like me. I'm very common type, the, the generator, we are 70%. And then there are the manifestors, we are about 8% or so. 
and then the projectors about 20 around 20 percent and then reflectors are about one and some percent so you are your type is very rare and unique and has a strong connection with the moon because all your centers are open you are here to be an evaluator and you have the knack to really be, be able to sense the environment what is good and also more likely assess and evaluate and advise people so anyway i could go on and it. it's interesting to see your chart and see you know all the the details so i don't know i got carried away by your chart i forgot the question on it oh no that's okay <laughs> Well, no, I, you basically answered the question because I was asking sort of what types of things you could learn about a person based on the, the body chart, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. So you learn the type, which yeah. the type gives you your strategy. So for you, if we take you as an example, because it's always good to have an example, your strategy for you is to wait for a cycle of the moon. Like for instance, not if you have to go buy a croissant or uh, some, you know, a baguette de pain. No, but if you have, right, <laughs> if you have to take spend money or invest in a new car, or you want to move, or or get married, or get divorced, whatever those big things in life, then the key for you would be to wait at least twenty around twenty eight days before you make your decision. Like from and you start this twenty eight eight day period starts. At the moment, you need to make the decision. Like, oh, I have to make the decision. And while you're waiting, then you can discuss the decision you need to, to make with, with somebody that you trust, who you trust. Not so that, per, that this person gives you the, what to do or tells you what to do, but more like she's more like a soundboard for you. And basically, you're going to hear in your own voice when the, the right decision, you know? So right. that's... That's really the key for you. For big decisions, that's really uh, what uh, is best for you. It's not to, to go too, too fast. Now, if you're looking to be surprised, that's your signature. We all have a signature. The signature of the reflector is the surprise. For the manifester, it's peace. For the, for the projector, it is success. And then for, for the generator, it is satisfaction. So, you know, when you use that strategy, then you meet less resistance and you have, mm. it's easier to, to move towards, uh, you know, uh, less, you meet less resistance if you use that tool that is the strategy. Then we also have the inner authority and the inner authority for you is, is the moon, is basically the, being tuned with your cycle, the cycle of the moon and the, wait and and be and also talk talk to people you trust so i don't know if you have maybe you can tell me if you have friends you trust and you discuss things because it's really a process for you and it and that's yours it's not the same process for me right you know but that is yours for instance yeah i definitely have people i run things by when i'm in a process of making decisions you know, I have, you know, friends or, you know, my sister, members of my family. I also run it by my, my guides, my spirit team, my intuition, like, you know, there's all kinds of layers, <laughs> right, that, yeah. that sort of happen before, before I make yeah, a decision. Absolutely. I do have a tendency to want to push forward quicker than my guidance and my, the flow of my life wants me to go. So I want to make the decision faster, but then I always seem to be held back a little bit more than than I would like. That makes sense. Yeah, and yeah, it's 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 kind of fashionable to go fast, but yeah. <laughs> many many of us, which I, it's it's you know over fifty percent of the population, we're not meant to go fast. Yeah. So slowing down is actually healthy for most of us because we don't have access to clarity or insight. Just you know. In the present, it needs to, to mature. Right. And so that's definitely. And uh, for you, if you know, when I look at your chart, it's also everything is a question of where you are. Lo you know, in the place you, you, it's important for you to love the place you are, you, where you live, where you work, your environment, your your street, your quartier, your city, mm -hmm. your you know that you like where you live. If you like your house, then 
because you're so sensitive to to frequency that you take everything in mm -hmm. right so because you're very open the reflector is the most open so if you if you're in the wrong place you're going to meet the wrong people yeah so people sometimes say oh how can i find love people that are like you know like you and i also have this this one of this the same center open it's called the g center it's so important for us to be in the right place mm. and then we meet the right people and we meet love and we meet friends and we meet you know and we make money because we are in the right place yeah does that sound like so yeah? so how do you know if you're in the wrong place then well for you it's you it's going to be very much a sense you're going to smell it or taste it in your it's your your cognition is taste so for you 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 more likely have a strong it could be just um a sense you you know yeah you sense it and yeah don't you yeah you sense i do it. yeah yeah you sense it. so trust that yeah absolutely yeah i was just i was i was curious because obviously everybody has their own particular strengths and gifts so whether mm -hmm. it's like you were saying if it's in your physical senses or if it's in your your intuition or wherever it happens to be are those things that you can see within the chart as well Yes, yes, yes. Well, absolutely. That's called, you know, authority. And we all have a different, there's different types of authority. You know, authorities, it can be the solar plexus, which is more emotional, you know, authority. That's true for me, for instance, but not only me, 50% of the population, it has to do with how we feel and it's the pleasure. If it feels good, then it's good. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. The thing with that, you know, authority is that it has no clarity in the moment. So basically the advice is don't make a decision when you are totally high on, on the wave. We call it the top of the, it's like surfing. If you're on top of the wave, you see life, you know, everything looks good. Right. And I take an example, if I go in a shop, for instance, I'm on top of my wave. Then I fall in love with the first pair of shoes I'm looking at. <laughs> it's not the right time for me to buy the shoes because mm -hmm. I'm high on my way, you know? Yeah. I'm falling in love like with this shirt and this pair of shoes. Then if I buy, and I've done that, if I buy them right away, then uh, when I, the next day, I'm like, what did I do? I don't like them anymore, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have to return them. So we say, if your inner authority is emotional, just sleep on it sleep on things like yeah you love the shoes but go home and then come back the next day or if you're on the internet don't click right away mm -hmm. Maybe look at them and, and you know look at them again you know basically at least one night but the the advice is three nights sleep on it you know to wait three days three nights minimum before spending too much money or making a major decisions and we're not talking about again if you are in a restaurant and the, and the garçon is coming with asking you what you want to eat then of course you're, right. not, you're not going to tell him oh i need to sleep on it no <laughs> it's not going to work <laughs> it's not right. going to work but you know for things things you have to spend like i said spending money or any interaction involving a commitment those things, you, you you know, there is no truth in the moment for people that have the solar plexus. Now, it's very different for people where their you know, authority is splenic because those people are very, 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 very sharp and very fast. And there are mm. many people who have that as their you know, authority. My boyfriend has that as, as his own authority and he's, he can just go, he's like very quick on his feet. It's interesting to see how we can be so different. Mm -hmm. You know, some people need to wait and some people can go fast. And that is uh, the why human design is so precious, especially in, for instance, in a family, in relationships, you can understand why and how we are different. And uh, it's not about judging the other. It's more about accepting our differences and then um, allowing right. everybody to be themselves. And and also in working with the, the individual energies of each person, right? And understanding that even though somebody operates differently than we do, it doesn't necessarily make it wrong. It just means that they just operate differently than we do. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And uh, to know, I would advise everyone to know their chart, their type, 
their strategy and their inner authority. This is really very practical tools to make decisions, moment-to-moment decisions that are correct for 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 you when you know this. And then and it's it, life is easier that way. You don't meet so much resistance or you don't try to please people because you think it's the best way to do things. Basically, your strategy will help you eliminate resistance, which can be frustration, anger, disappointment, bitterness, those things. doesn't mean they'll never be there, but they can be there less and less. Right. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about the other types? So we, we went over the type that I am, which is the reflector. Can you just give us like a brief summary on the, the generator, the projector, and what is the other one? The manifester? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Let's, okay. start with, let's start with projectors. Projectors are about 20%. The projector has a focused aura, and they, they are here to be recognized. And their strategy, the strategy of the projector is to wait for an invitation. And most projectors are very, very surprised when we tell them, don't run after people. It's not you. It's not your role. Anyway, it doesn't work for you when you try to initiate things or push the river or try to call your friends. And you know how it's sometimes people really are so eager that they're going to do everything they can. And the projector, the more he's going to do that, the less he's going to succeed. And it's kind of a dilemma for the projector because they are, the projector is, is looking for success. And the, the way to be successful is to wait. You And remember, you are seen. People see you. You're not invisible. Just wait to be invited. The invitation will come. And the people who invite you are the people who are correct for you. And the, these other people or friends or people or acquaintances that don't pay attention to you, if you're a projector, guess what? They don't deserve you. Leave them alone. Wait. And the people that come to you and ask you questions mm. or ask you for guidance, because the projector is really good at guiding the other tie, especially the generator and the manifestor. Once it, it you know, it, it, it has matured, the projector is really, his role is to be a guide. So it can be successful, then it can be recognized, and then it can shine. Uh, when he's recognized, the projector, the projector can shine. So, Yeah. That's the projector, very efficient at guiding others. Yeah, it's it's sort of it's sort of like a like a lighthouse, right? It's you know, you turn on your bright light and you allow all the ships to come to you and not actually go out to the ships, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's basically it. If you're patient, things will and you don't have to compare you you, you and that's true for each one of us, but for the projector and and the reflectors and manifestors, because you're a minority in society, you're conditioned when you're children to, to act like generators. Mm. And the generator is the only one who has tons of energy all the time and is very busy. Generators have so much energy to, to generate life that they, they, they are always doing things and they have... You know, they can keep working and working. The generator is the type that is here to work, 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 work. And that's it's basically. Now, the generator needs to be respected. The way to respect a generator is to ask him or her question that he can answer yes or no to. You know, like for mm. me, I'm a generator. So if you talk to me and ask me a question, instead of saying, what do you want to eat? I won't know what to say to that. But if you say, oh, would you like to eat, I don't know, a pizza? Or would you like to go eat in a Japanese restaurant? Then I can answer that. Or would you like a cup of tea? Oh, or if you say, what do you want to drink? I don't know. You say, well, would you like to drink a cup of tea? And one thing at a time. So that's very efficient for generators. Basically, the generator has, is a sacral being. And the sacral is a center it's like a sound box that can make two sounds, the sounds of satisfaction, which is kind of now recognized even by advertising because it's the sound that we hear now. I've seen it in advertising. It's mm, a sound that sounds like, like that a little bit. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. It's a sound of satisfaction when we eat something that's very good. Mm, 
mm, so the mm, mm. so that's right. kind of now accepted and this is the sound of a generator when he says yes mm -hmm. now no is different from one generator to another can be different but basically what we are trying to do when we communicate with the generators to tap in those sounds Either it's a yes or a no, and then you can bank on it because the generator, the sacral cannot lie. The sacral center cannot lie. Ah. So a generator that says, mm -hmm, that's right. it, it's true. Or if there is hesitation, maybe it's, it's no for now. Anyway, then we enter into the complexity of it all. But basically, uh, that's the only way to respect the generator is to always ask a question even to children instead to to a generator a generator child to ask a question like uh, would you like to clean please would you please clean your room would you please do your homework instead of saying do your homework you know would you do your homework and then you can say oh not now yeah. i will do it later yes i'll do it but later and then again we can ask have you done your homework not yet not yet i'll do it don't worry and then again and we can change the tone of us have you done your homework <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. still a question which is respect the sacral needs respect the generators have been slaved for centuries and it's time to respect them by asking them question that they can answer by yes or no. So then we have the manifester. The manifester is, is here to have impact. And they are, the manifestor is about 8%. And it's the only type that can initiate. The, the key, the strategy for the manifestor is to inform before they act. So if they leave the house, they should more likely say, don't worry, don't wait for me. I'm going to buy a bottle of wine or a bottle of water. I'll be back. Don't wait for me. I may do some of the errands. Don't wait for me for dinner. And then when the manifesto comes back home, then everything is okay. But if he forgets to say, I, you know, I'm going and don't wait for me, everybody's worried and they send textos and they and they try to call him, and then he gets all pissed off, basically, because he doesn't like to be bothered. The signature of the manifester is peace, so he wants to be left alone. The way to be left alone is to inform before acting. So, of course, this is difficult to do this very short version of it, Annette, but it gives you a little bit of, a, you know, of an idea. Of, a, of an overview, yeah. And then in human design, then we study the nine centers. You know, there are nine centers. And then that's basically the flow of energy that goes through. They are energy hubs, carries the life force. And then they, they are very specific centers. We have two pressure centers, the head and the root, three awareness centers, the splenic, which is about survival, the ajna, which is the, the privilege to be a witness, to see, you know, to be an, ob an observer. And then the, the solar plexus, which is the younger awareness center, which has to do with emotional intelligence, which, mm -hmm. you know, is under tons of mutation right now. And it's also a window to spirituality. I always say, is the, you, I'm sure you, because you are spiritual, you, you heard that it's, a, it's the glass half empty or half yeah. full. Yeah. So, that's very much what's going on with the solar plexus. We have the heart center, which is the, the motor of uh, yeah. um, willpower. Mm -hmm. And the sacral center, I talked about it with the generator. It's a life force. The root center is uh, the stress, the adrenaline, you know. And then we have the throat center, which is communication. The G center is, is uh, to do with identity. It's kind of the GPS of our body and then we have the head center and the ajna center and the mind in human design is really looked at as a, as a wonderful tool uh, to memorize to study to analyze to make lists to conceptualize to discern to find inspiration but never 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 to make personal decision the decision making process is done with you know authority and it's never never the mind basically we are not the mind the mind is a wonderful tool to be 
mm. used and it's precious, but it's not a decision making tool. And it has the maturity of about a five year old. So right. uh, learning how to be to be watchful of the mind, you know, going back and forth, going back and forth. Right. <laughs> uh, and then it's part what we, we explore that in the holistic analysis. That's one of my favorite, uh, you know, in human design, when you discover human design, the first thing is to find out your chart and you can go to any website. There are jovianarchive.com, it's in English, in French, design, design in France.com and you, it's free. You can get your chart for free. You can get a report that's not too expensive. Then you can, it's a written report and then you can get, go to an analyst and get your reading or your analysis and, um, and that the foundation analysis is the first but then we have holistic analysis where we go deeper and then we can really look at um, different aspect of our health digestive system because the, the, the you know the digestive system is differentiated it's not everybody the same and like when i look at yours for instance your stomach your digestive system and that needs to are you aware that for you you digest better if you eat alone in the calm and if you are in a in, a, in an environment where there is lots of stimulation or too much noise or too many people your digestion may not be as easy you know as good right i don't know if you notice that but yeah for instance with you it's it's to do with the the calm of and everybody's different uh, you know for, so we go into that and then we go into looking at different aspects of the mind. Uh, each one of us, our mind has, has a different way to look at life. Like for you, your mind looks at possibilities, you know? Yeah. And for me, my mind, like, you know, and possibility always has as a, as a binary. The, the, the other side, we call it distraction of possibility, is, is basically probability, which is your mind may sometimes have a tendency to has a tendency to create limitations. Oh, I can do that. I will not do that. I won't be able to do that. And then it goes back and say, Oh yes, right. I can. Oh well, oh look if you do that. So it's about watching that and we can really help with human design, uh, look at all this and in a way that is quite enlightening really and fascinating to look at all this aspect of the mind and basically the goal is not to to believe everything that the mind is telling us in order to make to make decision for ourselves so yeah sure when you're doing a chart and like you said people can go online they can get their own chart when it comes to the nine centers your birthday and your birth time that is what changes sort of what dictates the different centers is that correct yeah, basically in human design, we take in consideration two calculation, the, the time of birth and the time of the incarnation of the design crystal, which is three months before birth. So sometimes people say, oh, it's like astrology. Not really, because in astrology, you only have one calculation. Here, what the software, of course, it's a software. I'm not doing it by hand. We're not, not doing it by hand. Of course not. But the software right. takes the juxtaposition of these two calculations, the design time and the birth time, which are two different times, and then it creates your chart. And, and then the chart becomes alive. Of course, it has a story to tell, you know, which is what when you go to classes and we teach, you know, I teach people to become analysts. Then we learn how to decode this chart because the chart reveals, yes, your specific genetic design that has to do with your genetic, who you really are, how to be yourself, how to navigate. And then it provides you with the tools, which is the strategy and in authority to make decisions as yourself. I've talked about that to eliminate resistance. Mm -hmm. It also helps for relationship dynamics. It can help you understand why you have affinities with certain people. And maybe not not with others, so it can be very helpful with friends, family, and it's most important for me. It is so important for children. Most important for children if we can help children and respect each one, each child to in their uniqueness. Yeah, all those things are create the best environment for us, but for children 
so they are empowered to be their unique selves right and to develop as individual human beings instead of being conditioned because whatever you know yeah that's what the chart can can do yeah so then how can the chart help somebody overcome blocks or let's say face things that might be considered like their shadow for example you were mentioning for me a lot of times if i if i tend to rush or if i want to rush into something you know i could meet some sort of resistance having the the knowledge of your chart and the knowledge of that that moon cycle and understanding the the 28 days could make you know things in my life flow a little bit more smoothly correct yes yes so how yes. can how can it help people with their their individual journeys overcome any of those blockages or shadow work yeah yeah, yeah. the shadow work in human design we call it the process of deconditioning it's the different words but it's about the same meaning i believe the human design has a very specific language so when we say white i mean it's not colored it can be undefined also that's mean the same thing a white center has the potential to become a wisdom center if you are aware of the traps or the shadow side of this center so there are nine centers so there are nine shadows nine potential wisdom and it's about exploring that and then and that's why the reflector who has nine centers open like you there is such potent enormous potential for wisdom once you learn and um you know you become aware of those so the one that you know there is a hierarchy for mm. the deconditioning the one that is the most common and quite difficult to decondition is is the um, ego center. The ego center is the heart center. It's about the, the shadow side is about thinking that do I think I have something to prove? That would be the shadow side, trying to prove the, the our worthiness or so there are about seventy percent of people almost that are trying to prove their worthiness, which is a trap, you know, and then. The wisdom there is to, we give a mantra. The right. mantra is, I love myself the way I am. I have nothing to prove and I do my best. Yeah. Um, and that's it. And the, the, Because the trap would be there to, to the shadow side for these people. Would, and I'm part of them is to, and I don't do that anymore, but I used to, is to make promises to, to prove my worthiness. And that we're mm. not built to keep promises. So it can put tremendous pressure on the heart, on the stomach. And we find people with, you know, in the workforce that have ulcers and problems with the heart, heart problems, because they have made promises all their lives, for instance, for work. Right. Oh, I have to get to that number every month. Mm -hmm. And it's too, they are not built for that. So the wisdom would be to let go of that job before you get sick, for instance. Right. You know? And then there is... As you were saying about you not being spontaneous is not really something good for you. Not if you need to go to the bathroom, you know, need to wait. Yeah, <laughs> right. We are clear on that. But uh, if you if you need to invest money, then of course I would say wait, wait, wait. And the, and the shadow side would be not to listen to that and just try to be spontaneous. And you, for you, seeing your chart, you would pay a price just like me. There is always a price to pay for our mistake. Right, you know? right. And then the price can be money, but it can be health. It can be friends. It can be, yeah, it can be a big price to pay. So when you're able to point out these sort of shadow sides for people in their chart, what kind of tools are you able to give to them in order to be able to start working through well, these? Well, exactly the process what I'm doing for you with you now, giving them, it's what we do in an, an analysis. That's what the analysis and the okay. reading is for. That's what it is for. Got it. Wait. So it's basically just bringing the awareness to that aspect is allowing the person to be able to make the different choices based on what is coming naturally for them based on the human yeah, design. Yeah, we, we give them a tool. Um, it's quite for each center, like for the heart center, I said, you know, the mantra, you know. So it's kind mm -hmm. of practical, right? You have to, of course, you have to use yeah. it. For the solar plexus, I think I, I already told you, spontaneity is really not healthy for you. Right. Wait, sleep on it at least one night. So I would say, tell people, oh, I cannot be spontaneous. Let me sleep on it. Thank you for your suggestion, for your 
question, for your solicitation, for your invitation, but no thank you, I need to sleep on it. That's the tool right Right, there. right. Now, are you going to do it? I don't know. Are you going to? Um, that's, you know, the responsibility is, is on, on the person, each one of us, to be responsible, right? Well, and that's part of the process sometimes, right? Is that if you yeah. if you receive a tool like that and you decide to not use it and then you, you get the results that you get and then you can start sort of creating that idea that, oh, okay, well, so the last seven times I've done this, I've gotten this result and if I follow the flow of what my chart says, then I get exactly. a better result. So I'm just going to continue doing that. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's it. That's it. And like for, for then we would go through, for instance, the, the splenic center, which has to do with health. The tendency when it's open is that we, we, have, we don't know what's good for us. So the tendency could be there. The shadow side would be to be addicted. It's all the addiction. So it can be sugar, too much coffee. No, today, the biggest addiction is too much screen time, mm, you know, mm-hmm. not enough sleep on the cell phone, on the screen, and not enough sleep, right? And then how do we unhook ourselves from that? You know, that's the key. That's the wisdom is, a, oh, we need to find how to be healthy, have a good lifestyle, sleep enough, exercise enough, eat well, and eliminate toxic people, toxic relationship, toxic places. And so does each does each type have a particular propensity for each sort of type of habit like that? No, it's more it's more no? by centers for that. It's more by centers. Okay, got it. Yeah, it. The centers are really uh, and the wisdom what we found, I I need to talk about the wisdom like for instance in the splenic center we find the best healers. Because they, like for you, you have the potential if you, because you have this center white, I do too, I have the same as you, is if we learn how to be healthy and take care of ourselves and have a good lifestyle and we are healthy and we, you know that uh, holistic medicine is better for you. Of course. I don't know if you do, but I travel with my little homeopathic kits and my herbs and my vitamins. You know, I know how to take care of myself. But people like that they can become we can sense the suffering in other people. So you, we find healers can have this, that's the wisdom. Then you, you can feel what go, is wrong in the other. And that can be right. the wisdom for, for the center. So there is always the capacity to, it's where we, we explore and to gain wisdom. That's what the white centers are. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's really great information. Tell me, how can our listeners learn more? You have your wonderful website, and I know you do your human design school. So if you could just tell our listeners a little bit about that. Yeah, for in France, uh, so the official human design school that is licensed to teach, yeah, train uh, people to become analysts is uh, designhumanfrance.com. Point com en français. <laughs> and, uh, and then on the social media, it's the same. Mm-hmm. Everything Design Human France uh, is, uh, is on Facebook. There is a page and there is a group and on Instagram as well. Follow us. And, um, and then you can find all the information. There is free information on the website. There is a conference that is free every month in French that you can come. And then... Uh, yeah, and if you speak French, that's the site for you. Now, if you speak English, you can go to, I have a website in English, it's humandesigninstitute.com, and you can find some information there as well. That's it, Annette. Great. That's amazing. So I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. It's been super, super enlightening. You're very welcome. And I I wanted to let our listeners know that all of that information that Josette was speaking of is in the show notes. It is also going to be in all of the social media posts. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to walking this journey with you and pointing the way on your spiritual journey. If you are interested in learning more about me and the sessions that I do, feel free to go to my website at infinitesoullove.com. On all social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Infinite Soul Love 1111. Hey, and if you feel called, I would love it if you could rate the heart of you on whatever streaming service you're using. 
whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please take a moment, give it a review. It really does help the channel. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.